Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mm. I'm having problems with my video. Hey, uh, is it, am I on a panel? You are a panelist, Steve, so that you can present like you are, because the other attendees do not have access to speak. But there's no panel type discussion. No, like we're not asking you questions. You'll just be presenting. Okay. And mm. so somebody's going to work the slides for me? Correct. Yeah. Ava will be passing the slides as you go. Okay. I am having trouble with my video. It's not allowing me to share. Let me go over. I'll be right there. Let me see if I can help. Okay. Where is it? My um, Sorry. enable mask. Last when I was on the call. Enable mask. Oh. That has mask. I know it, it's new for me to allow. Oh, okay. It's weird because. What's that? You're not on mute. You're not on mute. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We'll be starting soon. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just give a couple more minutes. We don't want to start early. <laughs> Hey, Steve. Good to see you. Hey, Paul. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. If you're not speaking, let's probably all mute since we've got a lot of traffic and feedback. Is there going to be a QA for my stuff? Questions? Yeah. We, we well, we always allow people to ask questions. Okay. So they can they can put, raise their hand or they can put it in the chat box. 
and we'll give it about another minute or so, give a few more people the uh, opportunity to uh, log on, and then we'll start just momentarily. Cards are ready. I don't know if y'all can hear the beeping. <laughs> All right, everyone. I think we should go ahead and get started. Um, welcome. Um, welcome to the Global Trade Partner Update. This is our quarterly meeting. And um, I'm Tracy Vaughn. I am the Senior VP of our Global Trade Development Team. And I'm joined today by my colleagues, Caitlin, Ava, and Paul. Caitlin will be running the slide presentation today. So let's move on to the next slide. Ava, I mean, Ava will, sorry. Um, just want to um, say that, um, go through our agenda real quick. And a couple of housekeeping notes. This is being recorded for any of you that um, might have to leave early. Please note that um, we are recording this and it will be uploaded to um, the travel trade section of our website. Um, and also, if you have questions at any point during the presentation, please put those questions in the chat box and we will certainly answer those for you. So um, we do have a big agenda today. Um, so I'm just gonna run through real quick. Um, got a big announcement about a new member of our team. We'll talk about that momentarily. We're gonna give you some hotel market updates from the STAR report, talk slight, a little bit about cruise. Um, we are very pleased today that we have Mr. Steve Bellamy to join us to give us a great update on what's happening at the airport. Uh, we haven't had this in quite a while, so he's going to give us a very detailed report. And then we're going to talk about programs that we've done in our second quarter for 23. So the past three months, we've got a lot to share with you. Um, we're going to talk about what's upcoming in the, over the next couple of months as well. Talk a little bit about our media buys that we do through Aqua, um, and then give you some examples of that, and then wrap it up with our Lauderdale loyalists and some social media. So going forward, I am very, very pleased to announce that we have hired Roger Dudley to be our business development manager for the domestic market. I'm sure many of you know that Caitlin has been handling that market for quite a while. She's done it spectacularly. So Roger had big shoes to fill. Um, Caitlin has moved over and is handling all of Latin America for us now. So she's going to be doing as good a job there, opening up some opportunities there for us. But we are very excited to welcome Roger. He starts May 1. He comes to us from Experience Columbus, Ohio. Um, he has 10 years experience there. He comes to us um, very ready to hit the ground running. In fact, he will. <laughs> uh, we've got plans for him. He starts May 1 and he is going to be traveling for us May 2. So um, please join us when he arrives and help and welcome him here. He is familiar with the area, so we're blessed that he actually has experience in this market, specifically working the travel trade. But he also has a second home here in Greater Fort Lauderdale and likes to vacation here. So now he's actually going to move here and promote what I think is probably his favorite destination. So we're excited about this to uh, be fully staffed again. So moving forward, let's look a little bit at what's going on in the past three months in our hotel metrics. Um, as you can see, occupancy has been slightly under over the last three months, but we certainly have made up for that with our ADR, uh, double digit ADRs over both 22 and 19. I certainly think that has certainly made up um, any difference in, in um, a slightly lower occupancy. Um, supply, of course, is slightly up, but we're keeping in mind that over 20 and 22, we were um, up a lot um, because of the 20 new hotels we've had over the last uh, three years. Um, and, and of course, demand is above, slightly above where we're see, starting to see a slight decrease in actual demand is starting in March. So we're starting to feel a little bit like we might be getting back into our seasonality. I keep telling everybody that we've had two years, essentially starting in April of, of 21, of kind of high season. 
<laughs> but it looks starting to feel a little bit. I hope my hoteliers can um, share if that's the case and, um, as you see it going forward. And um, this kind of helps say why we're doing some of what we've been doing. So um, rolling it all up in our hotel um, for the first three months, um, year to date, um, we're slightly down again in occupancy, but again, ADR, double digit above both 22 and 19. Revenue certainly up from 2019 and demand as well. So we're doing quite well. And moving forward, this is always an interesting slide for us. I think um, there's lots of ways to look at this, but it's nice to be able to compare ourselves to how we're doing to our partners to the north and south of us, particularly in southeast Florida. As you can see, we're kind of in the, well, we're at the bottom of that pack, but we're in the middle of the pack when you throw in central and the west coast, which is actually a very good place to be. Um, you know, as we've been out about a lot of what we hear is prices are very high, but if you look at it for southeast Florida, we are the affordable option. And going forward, forecast versus actual performance for these first three months, kind of on target. They are only slightly off of what the forecast and what the actual was, as you can see. Um, you know, actual occupancy, 80%, ADR 235 and red par 190. So all of those were very, very close within the actual forecast. And going forward for 23, if we're gonna stay on track, occupancy at 75% and ADR at 190. See if we keep with that, see if we can get as close to those as well. And cruise passenger volume, as you can see here, we are um, tracking slightly under um, 2019. Of course, 2020 started out to be a banner year, um, but we certainly feel going forward that uh, we'll keep this track of what we had for 19 because, next slide, cruising is um, actually, we are sailing at near pre-pandemic levels. In 2024, um, bookings are very, very strong. Uh, remember that we are the third busiest passenger air, um, port in the world. Um, and certainly very important to this uh, economy here with a $30.5 billion economic activity. So looking at the cruise lines that are coming in this year, and just a reminder, the new ones, Azamara, Disney, Ritz-Carlton, and Viking all coming in. So we have such a nice selection from the family friendly to the ultimate luxury. And just want to remind everybody, please follow the port. They have lots of good information. Want to know what's happening in the cruise world, please follow the port, Port Everglades. And now I just want to turn it over to Steve, who has a great update for us. So thank you, Steve, for joining us. All yours. Uh, good morning, everybody. I, um, I hope I'm off of mute. So I see some heads nodding, thumbs up. Okay, fine. Um, okay, let's go to the next slide and we'll just talk a little bit about the agenda here. Uh, so the first part is primarily traffic. Uh, what's going on with the numbers? Who's up, who's down and why? Uh, a little bit on new service and I'm calling blockbuster announcements, but everybody on this line probably knows them already. And then just a couple of quick slides on on the, some of our new concessions and what's going on with uh, you know, the longer, longer term projects like the Intermodal Center, People Mover, those types of things. And uh, then some, as Tracy mentioned, a Q&A, whether it be a you raise your hand or, or the, the chat feature, and I'll try to answer any questions. Next slide. And one more. So that's by the numbers is our what we call our traffic. So this is kind of, this is just an overview. Uh, 2022, our total passenger traffic 31.7 million, uh, up versus the year before, and still down versus 2019. And uh, I've got some slides behind this that'll kind of explain why we're not really solidly at 2019 levels. But there's our rankings for 2022. Those are unofficial, but we're 17th in total traffic. 20th in domestic and 11th on the international side. And then there's the year to date through February. 
and we should be getting March in the next day or two. And the same trend is pretty much continuing. And so this will be on your website if you want to take a closer look at it from what I heard earlier. Okay, uh, whoever is Ava, is that you? There you go. So this is our market share for our major carriers for a calendar year 2022. You can see Spirit there is 29% of our traffic. has been our largest carrier for, I would say, uh, since actually since 2020, 2021. Previous to that, it was JetBlue, uh, but you'll see reasons why they are not our largest carrier in the next couple of slides. So the Spirit and JetBlue combination there is 50% of the traffic. So those of you that are thinking about what would that Spirit JetBlue airline look like, that's one indication that uh, yeah, they'll be pretty large here. Okay, next slide. So this is uh, our traffic flow for 2022 versus 2019. And the top is domestic, the bottom is international. Uh, the main reason I sort of broke it out like this is you can see the distance between the, you know, the yellow and the orange line on the domestic side is pretty consistent, except for September, which we, uh, that's the year we had the hurricane in 2019. Well, we had like 3,000 cancellations. But on the international side, you can see the uh, the gap between the two years is gradually, well, we'll call it improving and or decreasing, however you want to look at it. So we've had, you know, new service by Norse, uh, the uh, transatlantic service from Berlin and from Oslo. We've had Azul uh, started new service to Manaus. And, you know, right now they're doing twice weekly to Sao Paulo on some days a week. We've got Flair, a Canadian operator operating and Western to uh, the Bahamas. So we've had an increase on the international side and you can see that that starts to show up particularly right around September, October, November, December towards the end of the year and uh, should continue to, to, to do so. Next slide. Okay, so this answers the question uh, hey, why isn't the airport at 2019 levels like some other airports? Well, if you look at this chart, the ones in red. So this is the scheduled departures January through August of this year. So this is current information. And we have Spirit is up 18% with 13 more daily departures. JetBlue is down 30 flights a day. Southwest is down 28 flights a day. Between those two, that's 58 flights by itself and mostly on the domestic side. So this group of carriers makes up about 90% of our departures. So really whatever JetBlue, Spirit and Southwest are doing kind of steers the whole thing. Further down, you can see Delta United are up slightly and Americans, depending on what month you look at, uh, overall, they're down two flights a day. But the big ticket item here is the JetBlue Southwest alone account for 58 fewer departures on a daily basis. So that's a lot of people, a lot of seats. And, you know, they still have the same problems that they have had, which are primarily operational, lack of airplanes, lack of crew members, uh, staffing issues. Uh, most carriers are still experiencing some of that, but JetBlue and Southwest are the ones that are hit the hardest at Fort Lauderdale. Next slide, please. So this is another look at what we were just talking about. The white on the top is JetBlue, the dash line is 19, the solid line is 23, and the orange one is Southwest. And it just shows you the gap that we just looked at earlier with the 58 flights. But it's a, just another visual that shows uh, the percentage down that these carriers are year over year. And, uh, you know, this is really impacting our overall traffic. Next slide. Okay, so this is a good one. The, uh, what we look at here is, this is scheduled seats. The, the, the factor that's driving, the, you know, the fact that it looks like traffic is just about at 2019 levels or not traffic by capacity. 
we have larger airplanes by far. In 2019, the average seat for departure was 156. So every time a plane took off, the average number of seats on board was 156 seats. Today, it's 175, just about 20 more seats. So you have, uh, particularly Frontier and Spirit have these uh, Airbus 321s that have 224 seats on board. When you fill one of those up, um, particularly on the international side, that's like a wide body airplane hitting the ground. So uh, with the seats are up, even though departures are down significantly based on some of those slides we were just looking at, the actual available seats are just about at 2019 levels. You can see here in April, we're just about there. We're down only 1% and that goes off till the end of the chart. So we're expecting you know, that trend to continue. And depending on what the load factor, the percentage of people in those seats ends up looking like because demand has been really strong, um, we could be at 2019 passenger levels somewhere along the way here, even though our, uh, you know, our seats, our departures are down 58 a day based on that chart we were looking at a couple of seconds ago. So this is a good news chart to replace the bad news charts I've been showing you, or Ava's been showing you, it's her fault. Next slide. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is uh, our markets and I can't read the top part of it with our average flights and all that because man, there's a pop-up thing on my screen that's blocking it. Oh, I do have a printout, but you can read it yourself. It tells you how many daily departures we have and what the split is with international domestic. And now that I have it, <clears throat> um, so 280 daily departures, 91 cities in the US, 83, depart 83 international departures to 50 destinations in 22 countries. But uh, you know the, the good part is uh, on the right there, our top 25 domestic markets has been pretty consistent. Um, on the international side, that's moved around a little bit. You may recall uh, when COVID hit, Canada was a pretty hard place to get in and out of, whereas it was a lot easier to get in and out of the Caribbean and particularly the vacation spots. We had quite a bit of service to Haiti. Uh, Colombia has always been strong. And so for a while there, you know, historically Toronto and Montreal have been our largest markets. So they got sort of bumped out. But in the last uh, 12 months, this was the 12 months ending in September was the most current data. Um, you can see the, the rankings on the right side there. We have to, Canada on the top. We have the Bahamas, Nassau, Cancun, Havana. We've got six flights a day. That's still a booming market for us. San Domingo, Montego Bay, et cetera, et cetera. So you can get a feel for what our international and domestic markets look like based on pretty current data. Next slide. Let me go to my chart here since whatever this thing is, maybe I can close it. Oh, how about that? Just use my mouse. All right, so this is a country comparison. Give you an idea of uh, some of that stuff I was just talking about. So here on the top is Canada. April 2019, we had, we'll call it 12 departures a day. Today we have 16. So they're up basically four departures and that's 33% of an increase. And so you can go down there, down that chart, and you can see Honduras, Guatemala, Dominican Republic, all those markets are, or all those countries are, are doing quite well versus 2019. We have uh, an increase in activity. There's Brazil, the note says Bill Harzani started in June. And a lot of that red that's uh, at the top there, uh, you can see the comments is really, it's, it's the departure of Norwegian with all the European service, as well as um, they had flights to the Caribbean. And we had, you know, British Airways pulled out, Emirates pulled out, Tom A pulled out of Ecuador. And then further down the list, uh, it was primarily its, its, its frequencies, but um, there are some countries that uh, 
you know, well, Mexico is one that we had, Mexico City probably in those days, um, Costa Rica. Anyway, it's a good chart to give you a feel for what countries are doing and, and you know, who's booming and who's not. So next slide. A couple of bullets on some of the, you know, the, the recent news service. We had a Velo started flying to Newport News in Wilmington, North Carolina in November and October. They started Delaware and Raleigh Durham a few months ago. Frontier started Las Vegas and Cleveland in November. Swoop return. They had been uh, you know, absent for quite a while. So they started flying to Hamilton in, in uh, November of 22. Some new service by Spirit. North Atlantic introduced new service to Berlin in December. They've since turned it into a, a, a winter operation and they say they'll be back in October. They're not flying right now to Berlin. They are flying to Oslo still. And as all, well, new service to Manaus that I mentioned earlier in December, they resumed the Belém and Belo Horizonte is scheduled to resume in June. So lots of uh, things to cheer about there. Next slide, please. So here's this blockbuster announcement I was talking about, or one of them. So here's North Atlantic. This is actually its first arrival from Oslo, but at any rate, they start in London on May 26 with three weekly departures. So we're all raving about that one since Norwegian left a couple of years ago and British Airways. We obviously haven't had London and we know how important London is to the destination and even the region. So we're looking at Norse to be quite successful. Um, we have offered them in the, you know, our incentive program that gives credits on landing fees and facility charges. And we can, if we can convince them to use our marketing money, they, uh, they should do well. Next one. So this is another blockbuster, El Al, new service to Tel Aviv. So they're going to start with six flights in September and October to coincide with the Jewish holiday season. And then they plan on starting year round service in early 2024 with two weekly departures. So we're working, we're working with them on their security requirements. It's pretty complicated, actually. Difficult operation to put together. So they've been up here half a dozen times and we're trying to figure out how to make the requirements happen. There are, they're the only commercial carrier that actually have uh, some sort of a missile avoidance system on board the airplane. I don't know how they avoid the missiles, but they have the system. Anyway, next slide. Okay, the ever popular JetBlue to Tallahassee that's got everybody all you know, cheering downtown. They say that that's going to start in January of 2024 with twice daily service to beautiful downtown Tallahassee. And that is part of their package that they've presented to, uh, to us and to the, you know, the electeds downtown regarding what the Spirit JetBlue new airline could look like. And if there's any questions on that, I'll try to address them. But there's a lot of uh, moving pieces there. That's the question mark. Next slide. Okay, so just a couple things on uh, on concessions and what's going on with uh, the master plan and airport development. Next one, Ava. So here are some some concessions that have opened up relatively recent. Um, it seems like we're always opening up something. So we have Tropical Exchange on the upper left there, opened up in Terminal 3. Hip and Humble, we're hearing some pretty good things. People like that place a lot. Uh, opened up again in December, right around a week later from uh, Tropical Exchange. Then we have we have uh, Mac Joe Malone opened it up on, in March. Our Duty Free 360 opened up December 15th in Concourse D in Terminal 2 which is really a nice terminal now with the new Delta Sky Club that opened up a while back. Uh, next slide. And 
the much anticipated uh, escape lounge opened up in Terminal Three. This is a lounge where, you know, as a pay as a ticketed passenger, you can pay to use the lounge. It's a common use. We'll call it business class type lounge. Um, it's been very popular. It's packed all day long, and so. It's very attractive, but this is one of the deals that you know Emirates wanted when they were here. It took us a while to put it together, and they're no longer here. But other carriers, American Airlines, in that in that concourse, Azul, uh, the, the people from LL wanted to be close to this concession, so that their passengers wouldn't have to walk very far. So we have located them in Terminal Three, same place that the Escape Lounge is. Okay, next slide. And I'll just get ready to wrap it up. I know that you guys got a busy agenda. So Terminal 5 on the top there, something that you've probably heard about. Um, we're right now looking at who our tenants could be. Uh, if the JetBlue Spirit merger goes through, it'll probably impact who goes in there. It was originally supposed to be Spirit, but if that merger happens, that probably won't happen. So it's presently in the design phase. And we're anticipating completing it in 2026. The next one down below it is the, there you go. As a, those are the connectors between terminals um, two and three and one and two. Those are they're in blue. So we have the connector already between three and four. And that enables passengers to go post security between buildings if they want to go to see some other concession or eat in a restaurant that, you know, is otherwise they would have to go through the checkpoint twice. But from an airport operational perspective, it gives us a lot of flexibility. It enables us to check in people in one building and they depart from another. And then, you know, it just feels like you're in a concourse. So you're not going outside and coming back in, which is what you would do in the past. And so that's scheduled to be completed in 2027. Next slide. So intermodal solder on the top, um, automated people mover on the bottom. Both of them are in pretty much the same stage of you know, defining the project and what that's going to, to look like, talking to stakeholders. Uh, there's environmental reviews associated with both projects and we're anticipating completion of the intermodal center somewhere is around 2029, which will also be parking and that'll enable us to tear down the old Palm garage and the people mover right around the same time, 2030. And so the last one I believe is just a couple lines on the airport hotel that's still in the works. And all these images are from the master plan video that's on our website. If you want to check that out, so there's start we'll start planning this project uh, in 2024, and that'll determine um, it'll be identified. You know when the completion date will be. So it's it's um, it's very very early in the planning stages for that, and I think that should wrap it up. Voila. So uh, I don't know if uh, anybody's got any questions if they'd appeared in the chat. No questions from uh, Caitlin there. You got any questions, Caitlin? No? We're good. We're good? All right, well, thank you for the time, folks. I hope I didn't take too long and uh, looking forward to doing it again sometime. Yeah, Steve, thank you so much. Great information. You always make it interesting. Um, just a couple of notes for everybody about um, North and El Al, we have um, here at uh, Visit Lauderdale, I've been in conversations with them about opportunities for us to work closely with them in, in some promotion, uh, particularly the flight that's going to be leaving from London. Uh, we hope to have some marketing efforts with them and El Al has been very uh, uh, proactive in uh, chatting with us as well so that we can do some joint um, efforts as well to make sure that these launches are successful and we keep these flights. I do see a question, I believe. Um, somebody wants to know where the hotel, uh, the airport hotel will be. Well, I mentioned taking down the Palm Garage. And so that'll be basically the, that area 
which would be right across from the terminals, will be the entrance to the, the whole commercial complex besides the hotel um, concessions, office space. So right across from our main terminal buildings, right across from uh, Terminal 3, really. At least that's the plan now. Great. All right, well, I don't see any other questions coming in for Steve, so we'll move forward. Give you uh, some updates on what the team's been up to the last three months. Um, here's a list of programs that we've been out and about. As you can see, travel is back for the team. Uh, we have been very busy um, on a global basis. Um, certainly some of this ties in closely to what you just saw about the flights that are coming in as well. So um, just a quick, I'm just going to quickly go through this. We're going to go into in, to in depth on some of these programs. I'm going to give uh, the team an opportunity to speak specifically about them. But some of this has been local, this, uh, the ASTA South Florida Spring Affair, Brand USA. We've done two separate missions with them for Latin America, once in Mexico City and Guadalajara. And then a brand new, which they've done previously, but a brand new mission they put together for South America, four countries in about a week and a half, 10 days. Um, Caitlin's gonna give you an overview of that. Um, Cruise One Dream Vacations Trade Show, the International Inbound Travel Association Summit. Paul was there, that's all the inbound um, operators, opportunity to meet with them, an appointment show. Scandinavian mission that we did around the US travel show that was in Copenhagen as well as FDM, which is the uh, their version of AAA, the Federated um, Denmark Motor Motorist Association. Um, Steps to Success, Paul's gonna speak to. We did that here locally to help get you guys back on board, working with us on the international level. Uh, we did two travel and adventure shows in Chicago, one in Chicago, one in DC. Uh, the Travel Agent Forum, Ava went to that in Las Vegas, just recently back from that in the last couple of weeks. We did a mission to Ireland and England. This was us, you know, again, we're just trying to get back out there, kind of assess what's happening. Um, and we also did an auto in Colombia with kids in Florida. And then WTM Latin America, which was tied into the Brand USA South American mission. So we've been busy and we've been out and it's been fantastic uh, to be back, back on the road. So let's go forward. Um, locally, some of the things we've been doing, we love our site tours. We love our partners that host us. It gives us an opportunity to get back out, and learn so much about the product that we have here so we can talk about it. Um, we talk, you know, we talk best about what we know. So just a sampling of what we've been doing in the last three months who we've visited, all interesting tours. We had a whole, a jungle queen hosted the entire Visit Lauderdale team for an evening of entertainment and fantastic food. And of course, the tour on the boat itself is fabulous. If you haven't done it in a while, get out and go see it. Um, they've done a lot of changes to the island. Um, so it was a great opportunity for the, for the team to get out and see this wonderful attraction. And Local fans, of course, we benefit from these as well. I'm gonna let Caitlin have a moment here to tell us about these that she's in charge of. <laughs> Thank you, along with Ava, of course. Ava is uh, our coordinator who's been helping putting these together. So we have always wanted to focus on our huge domestic local base of advisors, right? So we get requests on a weekly basis of doing FAMS for them. So we, we like to partner with ASA, with our South Florida uh, chapter, and we've been able to partner with Brightline and with Miami and Palm Beach to do some interesting events really throughout the last year, but we just did one, um, I, it feels like forever ago, but I think it was in January, <laughs> um, with some local advisors. And uh, I think, you know, I'm currently on a fam right now. So after this, I'm gonna be jumping ahead to meet up with two advisors to bring them up to Lauderdale by the sea for some lunch. Um, but yeah, we have lots going on and I don't know if it's upcoming. Is the next slide, Ava? No. Okay. We'll talk about more fans later, but yes, those are some of the ones that we've had. We don't usually like to do a lot in January, February, and March, you know, because it's, it's the busy season for everyone, but you all have probably gotten many 
emails from us about asking for participation for ones that are coming in in that kind of shoulder and summer season. So stay tuned for those. And Paul, want to share steps to success? Yes, uh, thank you, Tracy, and uh, good morning, everybody. Um, happy to talk about Steps to Success. It's a program that, and kind of piggybacking on what uh, Tracy has said and Caitlin as well, in terms of the international market and all of our opportunities there. This was a program that we held uh, for two days. It was January 12th and the 26th um, at the Convention Center. And we were happy to present uh, a company called Steps to Success, which is a part of IITA, which Tracy brought up earlier. Um, in conjunction with them uh, to help teach our partners and present to our partners ways to really market their hotels, their attractions, their restaurants to the international inbound tourism market. Um, in international inbound tourism is on the rebound, obviously. We are very excited about the next steps and things that Steve brought up with some international flights coming in that we are working with. So this program really gave the partners, and we had over 20 partners that actually did attend with us the tools to get ready for that and to make sure that they understand how to work with that market and that it is a market that we are in need of here. It is essential to our tourism business. And we, again, we're happy to do this. Um, one of the things we want to do is we want to hear from you, um, all of our partners about continuing programs like this in the future. So please let us know if there are programs that you know of that you'd like us to pursue and we can uh, again, create and present to you down the road. Thank you, Paul. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to kind of go in depth on a few of the programs that um, we've done during this past quarter. So some of the um, missions that we did. So let's move forward and we're going to start in the UK and Ireland. Paul? Yep, and I'm happy to talk about the UK and Ireland mission that Tracy and I had the pleasure of doing. Uh, we held that in early February. I can't believe it's been that long already since we were there. Uh, we had the pleasure of meeting with the tour operators that you see here and a few others. Um, the big ones that stand out, of course, Tour America, um, that was in uh, Dublin, and Virgin Holidays, which was an incredible appointment um, outside of Gatwick um, in London area. Uh, it was a five-day mission. We started out in Dublin and went over to London. We also hosted two dinners, uh, which we were able to then present um, uh, about about 50 pages worth of information for our agents and media and press that were there. Um, each dinner event, one in Dublin and one in London, held had way over 25 people or 20 to 25 people in each one. So we were able to really hit uh, the main uh, commercial operators that we want to deal with um, that do bring uh, our, obviously, our, our travelers here to uh, not only the United States, but our Fort Lauderdale and Southeast Florida region. Now, a couple of things about why we are hitting up those markets, and it's very important, the travel trends. Um, adult couples and families, as you can see here, the popular months are June and September. And destination planning, this is very interesting, uh, three to five months in advance uh, for 19% of them. It's the top three in U.S. in terms of destination interest and number four in total arrivals in 21. And again, here you see some pictures here. We were at Virgin Atlantic's office. Um, and then you see one of our dinners, actually two of our dinners that we did host and present at. And I just want to point out, too, that during this, this week, we had a lot of opportunities to meet with media there. I want to say that um, it was interesting for us going over and, and doing a bespoke mission for visits, you know, for the greater Fort Lauderdale region. Um, and we are discovering that a lot of our competitors are doing the same. So it's extremely important that we're out there promoting us. We've got to get back in people's mind, working with these operators, but also getting some of this exposure through not only the the trade media, but also the consumer media. So I personally had quite a few, maybe 10, 10 to 12 different opportunities to, to meet with media. We've got some, some um, print, some digital, and also radio actually in, in Dublin, a great opportunity there. So Ava, you can kind of flip through this, TTG, Travel Mall, these are our trade uh, media that we met with, got not only from Travel Mall, the, 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 the digital, but also an actual interview. Um, this was this radio station in Dublin, great reach there, 84,000, all consumer, great interview. It was um, an interesting experience to have that. So um, really important that we're out there and we're gauging 
um, you know, what we're, what's, how we need to approach the markets and who we need to be working with and really working closely with some of these top operators. For example, Paul mentioned Virgin Holidays. We're working closely with them to make sure that we're working with our hotels, that we're getting good wholesale rates so that we can have a competitive product out there. So we're leaning on you. We're looking at doing some co-op with some of these as well to keep pushing this. So, and then we went to Scandinavia. We'll turn this over to Paul. Another interesting market for us that ties in again with Norse, um, you know, that is flying directly out of, of um, Oslo. Um, and we actually did some work with them as well um, while we were there. So, Paul? Well, as, as Tracy said, uh, we, we've been very busy in uh, the second quarter here for our fiscal year. The Scandinavian mission and you know, Tracy and I had the pleasure of going over a few weeks ago, and I definitely know why they want to come to Fort Lauderdale after we probably put out our winter coats for the first time in quite some time. Uh, and uh, you'll have to ask Tracy how she felt when she walked out of that airport in Stockholm for the first time. It was it was chilly, no doubt about it. So anyway, the reason why we went there, obviously, is not just for Norris, but it is one of the top four destinations uh, coming to the United States in terms of pure numbers. Um, they are the number one for long haul destination um, from the Nordic market. They are number one for spending um, for visitors out of Europe. And the average length of stay, and this is the most important feature to me, at least uh, one of the most important, 20 days in 2019. To give you an idea, Germany, which has always been known for that average length of stay, is 16.9. So you're looking at three more days per their stay. Um, as I mentioned, it's the fourth largest in the region uh, for Europe in terms of visitation to the states. And Florida is number three um, destination interest for the United States for Scandinavia. That includes Sweden, that includes Norway, and that includes, of course, Denmark. Uh, they book trips 95 days in advance. So again, you're looking at a long-term planning stage. And here's the biggest one, two months of paid holiday and vacation. That's incredible. And I wish we were able to do that here in the States sometimes. And you can also look at the numbers here on the side that we put together for you. Um, it's larger than Italy. And as they said during our shows, the USA Travel Show and FDM, that they are on a mission to catch, Fran catch France and Germany uh, within the next couple of years. Next slide, please, Ava. Part of the mission was, as Tracy mentioned a few slides ago, the USA Travel Show, which we started out with in Copenhagen and FDM. Um, FDM is like our AAA, as Tracy did mention. We were able to see almost 3,000 consumers at the FDM Travel Show within about five hours. So very busy, constant talking with people about coming uh, to Southeast Florida and the greater Fort Lauderdale region. Um, in Oslo, we had the pleasure of having a reception and presentation with them. Uh, we also had RCL, uh, uh, Royal Caribbean, and Norse speak at the same program. And then in Stockholm, we were there for a day and we had a travel dinner as well. We also met with the U.S. Embassy in Oslo as well, and we were able to talk about some ideas with them in terms of increasing more tourism and working with our port and airport here. Uh, real fast, before we move to the next slide, the picture on the bottom, I guess my right, maybe your left, uh, with Tracy and I, the gentleman in the middle is the actual ambassador uh, to Denmark, and we had him wear our uh, sunglasses, Port Lauderdale sunglasses. Uh, he loved it, so great picture there and a uh, great, great Scandinavian mission and two shows for us. Next slide, please, Ava. And again, some follow-up pictures on this as well. Uh, there were two winners, uh, one in uh, Sweden and one in Norway. Uh, they were uh, able to come over the first one in Norway, uh, was able to win, I believe, a cruise airline tickets through Norse and uh, two nights uh, um, stay here in Fort Lauderdale. And in, in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, the agent there in the middle uh, with Tracy and myself, was able to win a two night stay here um, in also uh, Fort Lauderdale. And if you can see on the bottom there, that's us walking out of the Stockholm airport. <laughs> it was freezing uh, and they had just had a snowstorm. So I definitely can see why people definitely wanna come here. Next slide, please, Ava. Thank you, Paul. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, Kaylin has taken over Latin America for us and goodness, she has, uh, tackled it um, <laughs> and uh, been extremely busy over the last few months, uh, back and forth and uh, gonna make a big hit down there, I believe. So, Caitlin. Thank you, Tracy, yes. Uh, so as Tracy mentioned, we were able to participate in two Brain USA missions, which was a great opportunity for us to reintroduce ourselves into the market, 
um, with a lot of support. You know, we were lucky enough to be the only, fortunate enough to be the only Florida destination with the Brand USA Mexican mission. And for the South American mission, uh, there was Orlando that was there um, and Miami. So we, you know, we've been able to really stand out as a great option for um, all of those visitors and all the tour operators looking to do business with us. Uh, so we were in Colombia. I was in Colombia twice within the last couple of months and um, in Brazil and Argentina, as you can see, in Mexico, I was in January for this brand USA mission, but I was also there in November. So uh, with a virtuoso event, uh, you can go to the next slide, Ava. Um, you can see just a little bit of um, some information on some of those Mexican uh, the Mexican market, which is interesting for us. We're still kind of studying it. Uh, it's such a large market, uh, you know, with a giant population of 130 million people. Um, and there's so much opportunity there. We just don't have those direct flights from Mexico City into FLL, but there's a lot of them going into Miami. Um, we do have that Cancun flight, and there's a lot of connecting flights, you know, with United and other ones going from Mexico City to Houston and then coming to Fort Lauderdale. So they're coming here. Um, we're just still studying how we're going to really target the market. Um, but we know that they love shopping, right? No surprise there. Um, we know that there's a lot of generational travel. They love cruising as well, and they love their sports. So there's a lot of opportunity for us. Uh, and this is just one example of something that came about from the mission in January. Um, we were able to, and January and also from the FAM that we did back in October with Visit Florida. So we were able to bring one of the uh, tour operators from Mexico City on that FAM. I met with them again in January, and then we've got this great co-op here that they uh, put together featuring um, some great stays here in Greater Fort Lauderdale. So uh, we're excited about that, focusing on the pre and post once again uh, for that Mexican market. Um, but yes, we know that 40% of the millennials intend to travel to the U.S. And right now, I this is, I don't even think the average age is a millennial anymore, but their average age of the Mexican population, just as an FYI, is 29.8. So there's a lot of opportunity there, right? <laughs> um, so we know that there's great opportunity for luxury market too, and they come on their off season. Uh, so we're looking at that as well. There is still some visa issues going on there, but it's such a large population that um, we know that, that we can really grow that market. So more to come on the Mexican opportunities. You can go to the next slide, Ava, please. Um, and then now on to you know, our top Latin America market, you know, next to Brazil, we've got Colombia here. Um, we were there for Anato, and then we were also there for the uh, sales mission here. And we just kind of put this slide in here that Steve had provided us a little back ago with some um, of our direct flights that we have coming in to FLL. So lots of opportunity in this Colombian market. Um, we know they're coming, uh, but they are short time bookers. So the opposite of what you're seeing in uh, Europe, they like to, they're booking 40% of them are booking within a month of the trip. So, uh, so that's interesting to, to study there, but their, their top destinations, Miami, New York, Fort Lauderdale for all of the US based on, on air. So thanks to that uh, great service we have there. We're, we are looking for more opportunity to do some missions with Spirit and maybe some fam trips. Um, so more to come on that as we study the market a little bit more. Um, and as you know, right, they're, they're definitely traveling in the summertime, June, July, and then the December months. But they also have a week of vacation in October right around the Columbus weekend. Uh, so some of you may already have that date, that data, but to kind of look out for that. Next slide, please. Then we went down to Argentina on the sales mission. And, you know, Argentina's having some economic issues right now, as many of you probably know. Their current interest rate is at 70%, and that's an official uh, fact there. So uh, when we start to complain about some of our economy, I think about Argentina a little bit there. But 
they are still traveling. You know, they love to come to South Florida, as we know. And although we don't have direct flights from Argentina, we do have lots of uh, connecting flights coming in through Copa and Avianca. Um, and they, you know, Miami has a lot of direct flights. So, you know, looking at how we tap into that market and bring them up here, they definitely know about us. And that kind of affluent traveler, they feel like they're in the know when they know about Fort Lauderdale. So um, we're, we're really trying to, you know, maximize that luxury traveler coming in from Argentina to go um, cruising and to go shopping and look for new experiences, as they said that they are looking to do here. Now, Chile, uh, they, some of you may not know, but they do, they are a visa waiver country. So the only Latin American country where um, they do not require um, the, a tourist visa like other countries do, you know, they have a waiver that they need to form out, fill out similar to Europe. Uh, so once they implemented that, they saw, is it on here? No, I didn't put it on here, but they had, um, I think, a 15%, you know, direct impact of um, more flights and more seats being sold into the destination, into the United States as a whole. And as you can see here, Miami has 51% of the market share of all Chileans coming into the United States. So um, based on flights, FLL is currently at 7%, but we know that, you know, some of them are, are coming our way and that's my job to make them come here even more. Uh, so more to come on that. But I did have a great meeting with United Airlines in Chile as well. And we are the second most booked destination from Santiago. So they found that very interesting. They're connecting in through Houston. Uh, so, so lots of work to be done there. Um, this was actually one of my more productive countries, I believe they were very receptive to growing that business and um, to coming our way and to learning more about um, everything that we have to offer. They really do feel that, you know, maybe some of our neighbors to the north and south is a little bit oversaturated and they want to learn more about what we have to offer. So lots of great opportunities there. We did meet with the um, ambassador as well in Chile and we got a lot of great opportunities to do a webinar with them through um, all of that kind of southern cone of countries there. And Ava, the next slide, please. After, you know, after Colombia, Argentina, Chile flew over to Brazil to have some events with Brand USA and then to finish up with WTM. So it was a very busy couple of days there. Um, but of course, Brazil is such you know, so much potential there. Um, is this on here? But one big takeaway uh, that we learned there, Trace and I, is that the economy of Sao Paulo in Brazil is actually larger than all of Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay put together. Okay, so if you see me on a plane going down to Sao Paulo a lot, that's why. Uh, there is so much opportunity there, and we're just looking to get right back in the mix there and to make sure that we grab our market share and grow it even more because we know they're coming for shopping. We know they're going to Orlando. You know, all of that we know, but how can we just maximize on that? Uh, so next one here, please. Uh, there is opportunity with all of our markets. You're seeing this trend here, luxury, right? We know that there is they're coming for that. Family travel is still number one um, and cruising comes up all the time as well. But they are looking, you know, talking with the Brazilian tour operators are looking to find that value add, right? So they're interested in um, what kind of promotions and what kind of add-ons we can include. So not necessarily discounting, but really just looking for that value add. So I am going to be really focusing on some product development for all of the markets, but definitely focusing in a lot in Brazil right now. Uh, so I'll be reaching out to all of you hotel partners. If you're interested in learning more about the market, please reach out to me and we can work on some product development and filling out some um, worksheets and getting them in front of the right people so that we can get your property uh, highlighted and selling with, um, with all of their operators there. If you can go to the next slide, please. That's it. So a whirlwind, but more to come. You know, like I said, we were just kind of getting our feet wet, reintroducing ourselves into the market. We, of course, were there last year. Paul and Tracy were at WTM and 
you know, we've been there, but it feels like it's been a while that we haven't been in front of and really building those relationships, you know, for many reasons, mostly COVID, but we are there now and we're doing the right thing. Thanks to Tracy's leadership to putting me there in, in Latin America. Uh, but no, just spending a lot of time, you know, um, in market and building those relationships. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, just a quick wrap up. I just want to, um, Caitlin said a lot there, um, but you know, we have gone through a renaissance during this um, last three years. And so we, and new branding. So we have a lot to tell. And we also have a lot to learn in these markets because we really need to understand, you know, is it coming back like it was previously in 2019? Or do People have different mindsets about what they want to do. Are they looking for new destinations, something different? And we're hearing a lot of that. That, And so I think there is a lot of opportunity. I mean, you know, we shared how many flights are coming in and, and how many people are focusing on South Florida, Miami. But a lot of what we're hearing is they want to do something a little bit different that still feels familiar. So we do feel like there's a huge opportunity here. Mexico, it was one I wasn't sure about. We sent Caitlin. Um, and we're really understanding that looking at what's happening in our, with our port and the cruises that are coming in, the, the luxury cruise lines that are coming in, there's an opportunity for us. So we're really trying to tap that. And I just want to remind everybody that so much of our international travel, European, actually comes during our summer month where we see a dip in our domestic travel. So it makes up some of that difference. And so there's all these reasons for us to go and explore. We've got to tell our story. We've got to stay competitive. I'm telling you, our competitors are out there. Um, and I just want a reminder that so many of our international travelers spend more when they come. So lots of reasons for us to, to be active. And we want to hear from you. We want to hear who's in your properties. So please share with us. We want to know, you know if we need to be elsewhere. But we, we certainly have good feelings coming back from these trips that we made some really good connections um, and really telling our story. So upcoming, so the next few months, what we've got on, on the books right now, um, the Global Convention, as I mentioned, uh, we've got a new staff person coming, Roger Dudley, will be heading to the ASTA Global Convention for us in early May. Paul is putting together a Canadian mission right now that will go to Toronto in the summer, this June. Cruise 360, it's here, <laughs> it's here now. Um, opening uh, sessions tomorrow. Uh, GTM is down in um, the Diplomat. Um, ILTM, we're doing this for the first time. This is a luxury program. That's, so Caitlin is back to Sao Paulo in May. Is that right, Caitlin, I believe? Um, yes, so this is the first time for us. We've not done this show before. Um, we hear very good things about it. And it gives us that opportunity again to talk about our luxury product. We've got so much new product here. Um, IPW, we're very excited about IPW. Um, San Antonio next month. Uh, we had a full, uh, full house. Uh, we offered it out to partners again, and Paul, uh, we are bringing everybody back essentially. Plus, 12 we're partners, excited Tracy. To you. What's that? 12 partners, 12 partners. Yeah, and we're bringing the Panthers. So this is the first time for us. Uh, IPW now have a uh, pavilion area that's all related to professional sports, and we are very excited. We confirmed this up in the last couple of weeks, so big deal for us to be taking the Panthers, they will be one of two of NHL. The rest are either MLB or NHL. So excited about that. Um, Ultra Summit is coming up this summer as well um, that Roger will be taking over. That's uh, put on by Questex. And then Virtuoso, we actually excited about this. This is um, at the Conrad in June. And um, it's uh, these are advisors that bring themselves here uh, related to the cruise and we've got an exciting program put together for them as well. So quickly, uh, next slide. Bams, you know what I'm gonna let these are, this is Caitlin. <laughs> yeah, it's an email Caitlin, but I'll just say, should say Ava as well. Uh, we have a lot of Bams, as I mentioned, I'm heading off to finish up our advisor ambassador program that we put together with North Star and Visit Florida. Uh, so we have two official Lauderdale Loyalist ambassadors that have been deemed as, you know, uh, we're going to put their little crowns on later and <laughs> some sunglasses and take a picture. Uh, but this is great. We're going to get some great press out of this as well. 
Cruise 360, Paul's going to be doing some Jungle Queen on Saturday. I'm going to be doing a Hollywood mural tour on Sunday. And then we have um, some Brazilian ones coming in. So Kalua Tours is coming in um, May. And this is not an ideal weekend. I am very aware of this. It is a large mega fam, 32 passengers coming our way. But we really wanted to take advantage of them choosing to come to our destination and not just going to Orlando. So we're super excited. They're going to be staying out west um, at the AC Sawgrass Mills uh, property, but we are still looking for other partners who would like to maybe host a welcome dinner, welcome um, a lunch. They're gonna go out in the Jungle Queen as well. So it's a very short turnaround, but we're really excited to just be in front of these uh, buyers. GTM, we always host a pre and post event. Uh, so Roger's gonna be um, doing that one with Ava, but we have secured hotels and we will be finalizing the itinerary soon. Tracy mentioned we have the Virtuoso Latin America. We have four different programs that we're going to be offering uh, for the advisors to go out and explore uh, attractions. And then the Travel Dream and Diversa Turismo are on the same dates. They're two uh, Brazilian fams that are coming in. Uh, so super excited for this. We're going to get great um, social media. As you probably know, the Latin American market is all about Instagram and video content. So we're focusing on um, doing a lot of that. But Diversa is one of the larger tour operators in Brazil. So we're really excited that they have also chosen us along with Miami to, um, to come to this this June. So uh, more on all of those, or you've gotten the emails, but please just reach out to us if you'd like to um, participate. We're trying to finalize those itineraries. And then Ava is championing, championing all of our Cruise One uh, dream vacations that happen quite a bit. Um, we've got a larger program coming in at the end of the month. I think it's like 100 people for that one. Um, and then more to come. So this is a lot, but we have more coming in July and August and September as well. So uh, bam, bam, and bam. <laughs> thank you, Caitlin. Um, I just want to thank all our partners that participate with us in these fans. We all know people sell what they know. And this is such, you know, a game changer for us when we can get the folks here, they can see what we have and they can see you know, some of the changes that we've gone through in the last three, four years. So um, it's wonderful for us to have this opportunity. And so, and thank you to all our partners who support that initiative. I just want to remind everybody that this team also negotiates all of our co-op through our travel trade um, so that we can do B2B and B2B2C. Um, lots of things that have been happening over the last few months. Um, some of the buys that we have, I'm just starting at the bottom there. We got WT and Latam. We work with David to produce a Portuguese um, insert for us for the show itself, but also overrun. So if we have those, a lot of what you see here, TA Connect, um, Facts Vacations, a lot of this is digital, but it's outreach, um, Signature, you know, the consortia there that we work closely with them. And again, we're just staying, it, it's integrating our programming. So we're, we're, we're promoting ourselves, but then we're seeing them face-to-face -face as well. So important. Quest Tech's already mentioned we're doing the Ultra Summit, but we're actually sending out a couple of emails in front of that. So we're getting, you know, stay in front of mind. Pleasant holidays. This is a, a, a very uh, integrated and, and um, full program that we're doing with them where we put money in, they put money in. It's got print, it's got digital, it's got training, um, flyers, um, consumer and uh, trade as well. So lots happening there with Pleasant Holidays. Um, Pan Rodas, this we worked with um, to get the Spanish insert for Anato. And again, this was an opportunity for us to have um, an insert as well as some overruns. North Star, um, Caitlin just mentioned that we did this in conjunction with Visit Florida and we have these ambassadors that are here. It was a social media kind of campaign that they did contest that they kind of earned their way to be here, as she mentioned. IPW, again, doing a buy around the show itself. So we stay front and center in people's mind. We meet with them and also showing them what we have. And Beds Online and the Phoenix International, uh, I just want to give you a quick example. Um, we are doing our travel guides. We've got five different languages that we're doing. Next slide, Ava, where we can see the first one is going to print um, as we speak. Um, the Queen's King's English now, um, and this will also be translated for German, French, um, Canadian, Spanish, and then our English as well. 
So we're very excited to have these, to be able to take these as we're getting out. As you can see, we're busy, so we've got a lot to share. Um, and then um, the next slide was the beds online and hotel beds. This program is running right now um, and we're having some success with this. I think Paul got the update if we want to move forward. A um, couple of slides here. So you can see that's a landing page for, for us. It's co-op banner, um, newsletters, sponsorship newsletter. So a lot of information, social media, and we've already gotten some stats from them as well. Next slide. You can see the total reach there, 118,000 agents on beds online. Um, client reach 20, almost 24,000 on hotel beds. Lots of impressions, over 2 million for beds online and over a million on hotel beds. And then just looking to uh, break down by country, I think we had. Paul, do you want to touch on this real quick? Yeah, um, the big thing here, and to keep the, the program moving here, is if you notice, uh, you'll see the value from 23 to 2019 and, of course, 2022. And the numbers are actually doing very, very well for us. Now, obviously, uh, U.S. is a, the only one that's really down compared to last year. And that's because, again, the entire world has opened up for our domestic travel. So that's why, again, that big push to really be involved in the international market with Caitlin's effort in Latin America, um, in Central America, and what we're going to be doing um, overseas in Europe and, of course, Canada. We want to keep increasing these numbers. Uh, for us. So that's what you're seeing here. As Tracy mentioned, we are two months into a six-month program. Last year, we only run, ran this program for three months. So very, very excited to be able to do this for six months. And these are the countries that we opted to work with, um, including the United States, obviously, for that domestic side. So again, looking to increase through hotel beds with a co-op of Brand USA as well involved with this. This program reaches out to both um, uh, business to business as well as business to consumer. So, um, again, a huge program for us. We do have a landing page. I definitely suggest that you take a look at that or ask me some questions, send me emails. We can also look at adding more hotels to this program. Hotel beds would have to approve, but we do have 22 properties right now that are involved. Uh, next slide, please, Ava. Oh, and I guess I'll jump right into Hoblo. I thought there was one more with, <laughs> with that, but um, Hoblo, uh, again, we cannot encourage our partners enough to join this program. This is a communication platform for us. It is global. Um, it's mainly right now in the UK and in Europe, but has started to move out domestically here in the States, Canada, and Latin America. Right now, our page has over 1,900 followers. Um, again, 15K in terms of post impressions over the last six months. The big thing I want to mention here, too, is the JetBlue UK partnership that we've actually started to develop through Hoblo. Uh, we became very close with them. Uh, we helped them out with one of their question weeks with a question about uh, the greater Fort Lauderdale region. And through that, Tracy and I have been able to talk to them further and I'll be doing a presentation to their entire team um, in the UK, um, all of their agents about the greater Fort Lauderdale region. So this is going to help us, especially with the amount of traffic that JetBlue from the United Kingdom does bring through to um, their points of entry here in the States to get to Fort Lauderdale. So a couple of big things there on that, but also we do have four partners that have taken advantage of the homepage. I definitely, definitely suggest, um, strongly advise that you reach out to me. I can help you get set up with your own page. Um, we are an umbrella and everything underneath us can be one of your pages. It is completely free to you. It is not a part of your website. It is a whole different type of program uh, that gives you the arms to reach out to the world and communicate anything you want to communicate about your hotel, your restaurant, your attraction, anything that has to do with locations. Um, and you'll be presented around the world through Hoblo. So please reach out to me with any questions you have. Next slide. Thank you, Paul. You're and welcome. Ava. <laughs> Ava, you're up. You're going to give us a uh, wrap up um, about the lo loyalist and our social media. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So uh, it's been a year since Lauderdale Loyalist has launched, and we've continued to see an increase in our graduates. Uh, we have currently over 1,300 registrants, uh, and with that, 925 have started, and we've reached over 500 graduates. Uh, so it's really been wonderful to um, hear from travel advisors how resourceful the app is and how easy it is to use it for their selling to, um, when they're 
posting on social media and they can use it on the go. Um, and looking at this year, we've refreshed some of our content as well um, and featured uh, other partners like uh, Pompano, excuse me, Pompano Beach, um, Downtown Hollywood Mural uh, Project and Segway Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we're planning to have more projects moving forward to include other partners um, and increase the awareness of our hidden gems and increase the graduation. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, if you're not a Lauderdale Loyalist, uh, you can scan the QR code or you can also go to LauderdaleLoyalist.com. And then next we're going to move on to our social media, um, Leisure Lauderdale. We've seen uh, tremendous growth in our following. Uh, we've had uh, over 77, 177% increase um, with over uh, 2,500 followers in the last quarter. Uh, Caitlin is working with a lot of travel trade influencers to keep the momentum going so we can continue to share our sunny destination with travel advisors. Uh, we've added more content like travel trips travel tips, site tours, and uh, we've shared planning tips as well for um, helping our helping the agents book um, major uh, annual events that we have going. Uh, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow Leisure Lauderdale. Um, you can scan the QR code here. Thank you, Ava. Yes, please, everyone go on and become a Lauderdale loyalist and follow us on social media. We appreciate it. And please, please, please upload your deals for our travel advisors. We are constantly getting requests uh, for advisors that are coming. It could be whatever deal you like, um, an added value, a discount, and so forth. So please, please go on our site to upload your deals. We appreciate that. Save the date for our next quarterly meeting. Lots to catch up on in July, July 13th. So please put this on your calendar. We'll be sending out updates as well. And thank you much. I see we might have another question that came in. Sorry, we ran a little long. Uh, oh, lot of deals this year. Uh, yes, there is some lot of deal opportunities. Um, I'm gonna have to get back to you about exactly what that looks like. So Jennifer, we can send that out. Um, do you know anything about the show, your badge program that is on visitlauderdale.com? Oh, show your badge. Uh, yeah, that, I, yeah. Part, okay, Caitlin does. Yeah. That, um, Toby is handling that. And so if you have any specific questions, Toby is the person in charge of that um, on our team. And it is live and it is working. So, it, you know, we, I think we just released it with C-Trade. Um, but we are actively trying to promote that and get that working for all of the convention attendees. So hopefully some for Cruise 360 will be taking advantage of it as well. And thank you much. I don't see any other questions coming in. So we appreciate everybody's time today. Again, apologies for the overrun, but I um, hope it was all worthwhile. And we'll see you hopefully out in the road and then on July 13th and maybe some sites. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.